Well, welcome back to the show. This is still the AM show on Joy News. Well, so we all heard of what has been happening about the police service. The police has interdicted all, the police interdicted three people. COP Alex Mengsa, Superintendent George Asari, um, and another suspected to be masterminds of a leaked tape to ask the Inspector General of Police, which has led to a parliamentary probe. The police say they have acted in a way that breached their regulations. Now, questions have been raised about the timing of the action and whether or not the Inspector General has made the right call. Now, just this morning, I mean, later part of yesterday, the police released another statement saying that, well, the disciplinary actions will commence after the probe by parliament. In the meantime, the interdiction is, however, suspended. So as we speak this morning, the three officers have not uh, been interdicted by the police. And that's what our analysts are going to help us analyze and get more details of this particular matter. Uh, we have been joined by lawyer Kweku Pinto. Um, he is a legal practitioner. Uh, we also have Adib Sunny, he's a security analyst, and uh, we'll be joined, uh, you know, by these two people for us to go into the matter. Um, uh, let me start with you, Mr. Pinto. Good morning and welcome. Hi, uh, good morning. Um, uh, do good I have... morning. Can you hear me? I, I can clearly. Do I have a deep as well? Yeah. Uh, okay. Come on again. So, so let, let me start with you, uh, Lawyer Pinto. I mean, when you heard of that action by the police yesterday, what, how did it come to you? I had an opportunity to comment yesterday that what, what the police had done was unusual. Mm. And in my view, premature. And thirdly, unwarranted by any rule of procedure having regard to the fact that the matters that were being investigated would in law qualify to be called subjects. Mm. In other words, they were at a stage that the findings had not been published and nobody knew whether that was right or wrong at any point in time. Mm. So I had made that comment yesterday. That's the view that I had taken of it. So I'm just hearing from you that they have suspended the, the interdiction. So I really don't know what's going on. Uh, well, the police say that um, a matter of, because parliament is, is probing this, um, it will be difficult to say that these, these people should be on interdiction. I think that is the, the main reason why they have decided to suspend <laughs> the interdiction. But why do you think that it was, it was something that should not have happened if they thought that the people had gone according to the rules right. of, the, of I policy? Think, I, think, I, think, I, think two, I think two or more reasons. First and foremost, this was a parliamentary inquiry. This got nothing to do with the police. Even though the personnel or the people, subject matter of the inquiry are members of the police service, Whatever was going on has nothing to do with the police in the sense of whoever is trying to reach some understanding of events that because have happened. So the, the, the whole the, inquiry has got nothing to do with in that sense, notwithstanding mm -hmm. the fact that it involved police officers. So that's point number one. Mm -hmm. Point number two, the timing. Uh, typically, we do interdiction, or interdiction occurs where prior to the commencement of proceedings or investigations into some disciplinary matters, it is determined that the continuing presence of the person whose activities have given rise to the investigation, his, his, his continued presence in office may hamper or affect the investigation in some way then the person may be required to stand aside for the period that the investigation is taking place. And not when the investigation has already started and midway. So that, that is the unusual part of it. In other words, if they really intended to interdict them, even as part of the investigation that was being conducted by parliament, 
then it ought to have been done way before the investigation started. However, if you wait for the investigation to start and the people are midway, I mean, giving evidence and so forth and so on, that any conduct that seeks to give the public a different impression or picture of what is going on is an unnecessary interference in the work of parliament or that particular inquiry that was being conducted. So that is what made the whole thing unusual and, in my view, unwarranted, having regard to the important part that even that inquiry itself had nothing to do with what was the police service inquiry under the police service act or under the police service regulations. Mm -hmm. So that, that is why I thought they are, they are, they are, what they did amounted to an interference with the important work of parliament. That, that's my view. That's why I took that view. So, so if you were to advise a police on, on the action they took, what would, you, what would have been your suggestion? Well, now that they've withdrawn their suspension, but mm -hmm. I say the suspension, now that they've withdrawn the interdiction, but certainly it's embarrassing because it must. You know, the whole exercise, the everything that is going on, falls into an area of law called administrative law. Administrative law is concerned with the fairness of any inquiry that is being conducted by way of disciplinary hearing or whatever. I mean, and the idea of fairness involves two aspects. First, fairness with regard to the rights of the people on the investigation with regard to their ability to offer themselves and have the right to, I mean, offer the best defense that they can have to a matter, including the right to counsel of their own, the right to question people who have made allegations against them, the right to have enough time to respond to allegations, so forth and so on. That is the first rule of what we call natural justice. Mm -hmm. That rule is the fairness part. Procedurally, they must have access to all of those things. And the second aspect relates to the, the, the party, that is to say, in this case, the Ghana Police Service, you know, that rule is called Nemo Judas in Kososwa. Nemo Judas in Kososwa means no man a judge his own cause. In other words, the Ghana Police Service, because an interested party, or the IGP in particular, being the head of administration of the Ghana Police Service, he ought not to do anything in connection with the hearing of the man matter in which is an interested party. He ought not to do anything that, to suggest that he's seeking to influence what is going on. We say justice must not only be done, but it must be seen to be done. Because the IGP is a very interested person in whatever is going on, because mm -hmm. he, if I understand well, is the subject matter or the butt of all the allegations that were made. So it's quite natural and interested party. And when you come into the police administration, he is the head in terms of the police administration, the head of the police service. So any decision on his part that will seek to suggest that somehow he is trying to stampede what is going on, or somehow he is trying to ensure that certain things go in a particular way, I mean, mask the whole discussion. And see, what then happens is that when you have colored the waters in that way, then even in my honest view, the withdrawal of that step still shows a certain fourth step that gives an indication of where he stands already. So the harm, in my view, has been done. I mean, these are the kind of things, they are sensitive issues, very, very sensitive issues. And by the step that he took, and even though, in my honest view, he did not, they now claim to have withdrawn the interdiction it is giving the public an idea of what he wants to do. And even what I'm hearing is even worse. In other words, they are talking about discipline hearing. That's a presumption that what they've heard so far suggests or is, or is indicative that something wrong has taken place. But that's not proper. Because Parliament has not finished its inquiry. They have not come out with their findings and facts and uh, what do you call recommendations or whatever it is. So where did they form the view? that there is prima facie evidence or there is a case to go for uh, I mean, what do you call a discipline hearing. And if it is so, why are they then waiting? What are they waiting for? 
if they have reason to believe that some wrong has been done or some in discipline, there's some evidence that suggests there's discipline, then they don't even need to wait for parliament to finish this work at all. You know, so I, I'm thinking that the way they are going about it is very embarrassing. What it means is that somebody is not advising the IGP or their legal mm -hmm. department is not doing a good work. They are not doing a good work at all because under the Police Service Act and under the police regulations, there's no requirement for them to wait for parliament to finish its work at all. Indeed, and in fact, and with due respect to parliament, it's my own view that even this parliamentary inquiry with greatest respect is, with due respect, an unnecessary, an unnecessary thing that it need not have been done by parliament at all. Because under the Police Service Act, uh, the, 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 police, the police council has a right and a duty indeed to have conducted this inquiry. But now let's put it this way. We have the parliament that are doing I'm not saying parliament does not have power. Please, somebody should mark my words very clearly. But if parliament has interviewed, so be it. And if they are doing their work, everybody ought to be patient for parliament to finish his work. Mm -hmm. Parliament has not finished his work. And the IGP has not intervened in this manner. And now you are suggesting there is a case to go to uh, possibly a police service inquiry. Is it? I mean, at the same time, is it going to be done at the same time that Parliament is finishing, uh, as Parliament is conducting its work, or you are waiting for Parliament to finish, and so forth and so on. So in my view, okay. the whole situation in which mm. all of these things have been placed, mm. I mean, leaves, it makes me uncomfortable okay. as, a, as a lawyer. That's the way I'll put it. I'll bring you back to the police service regulations later on, but let me bring in Adib Sanina. Adib, from the security point of view, uh, what could probably be the lapse here that the, sus the interdiction was done less than 24 hours where it, it, it was suspended? Well, thank you very much. A very good morning to you. A very good morning to uh, my senior colleague, uh, lawyer Kweku Pinto. Um, if the police had listened to some of us, it would have saved itself the embarrassment. If you follow my comments on the interdiction, I was very categorical about the timing, which I described as ill. I think the interdiction could have happened just a few days after the tapes leaked. Unfortunately, I don't know why, but we waited until a parliamentary committee sat on the matter and new issues are beginning to emerge. Yes, I do agree. Uh, with lawyer Kweku about the fact that parliament is doing its work, which is independent of, you know, the police, which is also doing this administrative bit. Mm. But, you know, they, they we hate it or love it. In one way or another, the two can conveniently be, be, be linked. So some of us felt that could it be a case of an attempt to silence people or to gag critics, because we're beginning to know that some senior officers have even petitioned the parliamentary inquiry mm. to have their day before the, the hearing, because they had a lot to say. And you would also remember, when this issue started, I told you categorically that there is a lot more to this issue than we know. But you see, if you put emotions to this issue, you might get it wrong. And that is exactly what is happening in this case. Fine. I agree that what they are doing is not illegal. But it begs the question of whether, indeed, uh, interdicting COP Alex Mensah at this time is right or wrong. Because let's, let's refer to the law. The Police uh, Service Regulation, CI 76, mm -hmm. Section 1052, mm -hmm. says that an officer shall not be interdicted unless the nature of the offense renders it desirable that the officer should not remain on duty whilst the case is pending. And the officer cannot be assigned other duties without endangering the interest of the service. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically the function of interdiction is basically for you to stand aside yeah. so you don't here with an active investigation. For crying out loud, this man is already on terminal leave. How mm -hmm. does he influence the investigation? That is why I think there is more about emotions to this 
than practicability. Mm. And that's exactly what is beginning uh, to, to emerge. No, but but, so but on, on, the, the, on the, the same police image. service regulations, 1051, it says the IGP may direct an officer who is the subject of investigations or disciplinary proceedings to immediately cease to perform the functions of his office. Where investigations or proceedings are likely to lead to the imposition of a major penalty, and accordingly, the IGP may interdict the officer from performing those functions. So, yes, you may say that he was on terminal leave, but he's still part of the service. He is not on leave or on retirement. So he falls under, and under this, doesn't he? But, but there's a lot he cannot do, even the fact that he's a police officer. Remember, he was asked to return his accoutrement. Yeah. His gun, his badge, and a whole lot of other items, including his vehicle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, you, it, it, there are so many things an interdicted officer cannot do, even though, in principle, he is still a police officer. And by the way, let us put some few things into perspective. You know, mm -hmm. it is the president who can initiate disciplinary action against an officer. IGP is also capable. And we have a police disciplinary board as well. Okay, so it makes me wonder where this is coming from. Because we are talking about a general in the police service. Mm. That's a COP. That is a general from, you know, when you, when you compare the ranks to that of the army. So I think a, 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 a better circumspection should have been exercised okay. before coming out with this in interdiction. Uh, unfortunately, I think it was hastened at the wrong time, mm. and in the end, it has backfired. And more issues are coming to fall. I don't know if you have seen the videos that is making rounds uh, uh, on social media. So, so I think, you know, it is, it is quite unfortunate. So who must bear the cross for this what you describe as unfortunate development? Well, well it is difficult to say <laughs> because I, I don't know where the decision uh, came from, who, who gave that order for that interdiction to, to, to happen. Um, but surely there are some administrative hiccups within the police service, and it has to be closely looked at. And I'm particularly excited that the parliamentary committee is not just looking into the authenticity of the tape or investigating the conspiracy behind the removal of the IGP for political experience, mm. but it has a wider scope of looking into the generality of the police service and even making recommendations mm. on police reforms, et cetera. And I think, um, I mean, I, I am very optimistic in, in the, the, the work of the uh, committee so far based on the caliber of people on it with varied experiences and the line of questioning that has come as a result. And I'm also intrigued about the new revelations we're getting to know by the day. And more information, I think, uh, behind the scenes is being fed to uh, the, the, the parliamentary probe. And mm. I mean, the, the interdiction in one way or another, I think to some extent undermined the workings of the parliamentary committee. But, but in, in general terms, what impact does what is hap have happening have on the, the, the entire police construct? You see, there are issues within the police service. There are major issues within the police service. And a lot of allegations have been made in that regard about unilateralism, mm. um, about abuse of power, etc. I, it is not in my place to sit here and say whether it is true or not. But I have had the opportunity to speak with officers from the very lower ranks to the very top. And there is a great deal of disenchantment within the police service, and we cannot afford to brush it off. IGP is a very good friend of mine. I've had the opportunity to sit with him. He's informed me about his plans for the police service. He has great intentions. We have seen remarkable changes within the police service. But if we do it on the, if we concentrate on the aesthetics from outside and not pay attention to the internal issues, then it becomes a bit of a problem. Because it's quite obvious that the police is deeply fractured and something has to be done about it. And I'm hoping that um, 
the parliamentary uh, investigation will look into it. So collectively, myself, you, in the media, lawyer, people, pencil, and the rest, we can collaborate to see how, you know, we, we, we can improve uh, the, the internal structures within the police service, whether it is through reforms, leadership reforms, uh, procedural reforms, uh, operational reforms, whatever it is, that would make the police stand out to be able to effectively execute their mandate as enshrined in the Police Service Act 350, okay. All right. Uh, Lord so, I mean, going forward, what is your expectation of how this whole matter should be approached from the committee's level and the police institution itself? Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you now, sir. Hello. Wonderful. See, let's put it this way. The police service is an institution like any other institution. And as my, my learned friend or my colleague has stated, there are deep-seated institutional issues and problems. I recall that the Committee of Experts who wrote the 1979 Constitution their report that the issue that accompanied the constitution they made some very important findings and certain statements or recommendations and one of the things that they said is that the whole idea of democratic governance is starts from an acknowledgement mm -hmm. that government is run by human beings who are fallible and being fallible we all make mistakes. Government make mistakes. So government must start from the point of acknowledgement that being human beings are liable to make errors. The whole idea of governance is to try to minimize the errors that we make, the problems that we create. And so that's the standpoint that I want us to start from. In other words, it's not the Ghana Police Service alone that stands in isolation, even though they are the focus now of our discussion and our everything. So it is my hope that these discussions that have started, in other words, this parliamentary inquiry, mm -hmm. as well as if the police service also wants to start its own service inquiry, at the end of the day, whatever it reveals would assist the police service itself or the government, indeed, of our government, I mean, not only of the current government, but of all of us as Ghanaians, to see the kind of issues that are there and how to resolve them from an institutional point of view. Mm -hmm. So at the end of it, I don't, my, 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 my prayer is that this, the outcome of the current inquiry the reports that come out of it will not start to attract the dust. We do them. Ghana has a good case of setting up inquiries that come up with fat reports with the best recommendations. And then immediately thereafter, they begin to gather dust, mm -hmm. as they say. They begin to gather dust because somebody shelves them and then that's the end of it. So that's, other than that, all of this that's going on, this is just, in my honest view, I mean, a tip of the iceberg. In other words, somebody just happened to have caught these people in the manner that they do. How about all the other people whose communication we have not heard? How about okay. everybody else who is doing all manner of things? So is the police service which has come under the, uh, under the microscope. Let us see and let us study the report which will come out. As for heads, that will roll. I don't want to comment about that. But okay. As a lawyer, let me show you my worry and my concern. Mm. There are two aspects of law. First, we've got what we call the substantive law. The substantive law is what states. I mean, it's stated in the acts, in the laws, in the whatever, do this, don't do that. There's also what we call the procedural law. Procedural law is a smart part of the substantive law. And that's when people get into difficulty, they begin to talk about technicalities. Let people understand that technicalities is part of the law. So, mm -hmm. for instance, when we look at the police service regulations, it specifically provides when and under what circumstances that somebody, for instance, can be interdicted. Mm -hmm. But you know, what has happened between yesterday and today? 
that alone could mar, like it has potentially caused this embarrassment and this confusion. And then somebody can then form a view that by reason of what has transpired, these mm. men who are the subject of this inquiry are not likely to receive a fair hearing. And if that one finds favor with the court of law, mm. the way the court of law does is to question the entire proceedings. You know, these are the kind of things that people sit behind and they say, oh, yes, there is this conflict. They say, no, no, but that is part of the law. If you conduct a hearing in a way, in a manner as to suggest that the subject of the inquiry is unlikely to receive a fair hearing, then it does not matter if he has caused blue murder. It could have been anything. So the, where we find ourselves now, I think that the police service must make up its mind okay. if it's got evidence outside okay. what is before the parliamentary okay. inquiry. All right. To okay. take these people to their service inquiry. Mm. If they have, mm. then of course they should offer them the best of opportunities and everything in accordance with the regulations to respond to the issues. And at the end of the day, if anybody is found culpable, because mm. when you read mm. the regulation, it's very clear. A okay. police officer ought not to find himself in any negotiations, non negotiation any discussions or anything. That bodies on politics or bodies or whatever. Okay. It cannot be the proper duty of a policeman to do the kind of things that they have done, or at least what we're being made to know that they've done. Okay. So All that right. is the way I want to, yes. Thank you very much, sir. I'm grateful to you. Lawyer Kweko Pinto is a private legal practitioner. But uh, to wrap it all up, then I'll come to Dr. Sakara. We have uh, we've been joined on Zoom by the MP for Ota for Echo Vincent Tasefwa. My honourable, good morning to you and thanks for joining us. You want to make a point on this? What 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 what's your thought about all of the development in the police service and and how must Parliament, of which you are a member of, uh, you know, approach this? Well, um, let me say a very good morning to your cherished words. Um, first and foremost, let me indicate that um, I was very surprised to have seen the interdiction letter that came from or that emanated from the police service um, largely because when you come to parliament um, members of parliament pay our standing orders and if you like the even the constitution of the republic of ghana uh, are immune to um, any prosecution or any disciplinary proceedings um, in relation to words or in relation to anything that is said in parliament. Okay. Per our rules, committees of parliament is also seen as parliament. So when committees of parliament also sit, mm. um, that is a full-fledged parliament that is being um, set up or that is um, being in place. And so with the committee um, that was set up by the Speaker of Parliament, even though it's an ad hoc committee, it is seen that it is parliament that is in um, session. So if whatever is said by members of parliament is not amenable to prosecution and cannot also be amenable to any disciplinary committees, per our rules, witnesses or people who also come to that committee are also not amenable to any disciplinary committee. And so I found it very surprising uh, when I saw a letter emanating from the um, Ghana Police Service, um, as it were, attempting to set these people through a disciplinary committee because of things that have been said um, when or when they are just witnesses to um, a committee, just to establish um, certain things that have been said in a leak tape. So um, that is my first point, or that is my initial point. Secondly, um, I am also aware that the rationale, if you like, the reason for the Ghana Police Service bringing out such an interdiction letter was because uh, these people or these three officers were seen to be meddling in politics. Um, I think that we are becoming a nation of um, ostriches. We are becoming a nation of uh, pretenders. Why do I say so? Ghana or members of the Ghana Police Service go to the polls and they vote. Members of the Electoral Commission vote there is a thin line between neutrality and impartiality. When a person says that I have lineages with a particular political party, whether the person is a police officer or electoral commissioner or whatsoever, 
I don't think that that should be so much of a problem because in any case, the person goes to the post to go and vote. What should rather be our challenge as a people is that in the discharge of the duties of such a public official or such a public person, has it been tainted with political clout? If that has been tainted or that has been affected by any political clout, that is where we should really have a problem. Because we allow the person to go and vote or we allow the person to go and make a decision during a general election. However, uh, we cannot be seen to be, um, as it were, chastising people because they have lineages with a certain political party. We should reorient ourselves as a nation. We should reorient ourselves so that people will understand that as a human being, of course, we are human beings first and foremost. We might have our biases, we might have our preferences here and there. But in the discharge of your public duties, um, you should be seen to be fair, you should be seen to be candid, um, which is in consonance with the um, Article um, 296 of the 1992 Constitution, that when duties or responsibilities are imposed on um, public persons, they are supposed to act fairly, they are supposed to act prejudicial, uh, not, uh, not prejudicially, they are supposed to act uh, in a very candid ma uh, manner so as not to bring um, any um, tainted or any disaffection to the public office that the person holds. Mm, mm, okay. Um, thank you very much for uh, coming in. So, you, so you, do, you don't expect police to use what the people said at the committee as basis for, for them to be interdicted, right? That, that's your point. It cannot be a basis. It cannot be a basis because they are simply witnesses to a committee of parliament. And as I said, when a committee of parliament sits, it is seen as a parliament itself. And so whatever is said or members of parliament are immune to things that are said in parliament from prosecution or from disciplinary committee. And people who also come to that committee as witnesses cannot or if you like they are also immune or they are not amenable to any disciplinary committee and so i do not see or i felt it was um a very wrong judgment for the police service to have interdicted them based on the things that were said during the parliamentary probe all right uh honorable vincent teko i said well, i'm grateful to you for joining us he is member of parliament for old tafo there uh...